why long-term field trips should be the first data bit you look at. Now I know that is a bold statement, and some of you may disagree, but hear me out and see if this doesn't make sense. Let me start by saying this, and then I'll explain why I made that statement. If you've ever had a medical issue that required multiple visits to doctors, clinics, and procedures, then the first thing they do is get your vital signs, and that always includes your blood pressure, your weight, your temperature, your pulse, your oxygen level, and these vital signs are indicators of how your body is functioning. If any of those indicators are not normal, they indicate that something needs closer look. So what does all this have to do with long-term fuel trim? Well, fuel trim is the same. It indicates if the fuel mixture is either rich or lean. Let's quickly review how fuel trim works. In the typical engine, you have a piston, an intake and exhaust valve, a fuel injector, oxygen sensors, and a PCM to control everything. So when that piston moves down, it draws fresh air in. The PCM tells the fuel injector to squirt fuel that all goes into the piston chamber and you have combustion. Now when the piston comes up and pushes all that out, it goes out the exhaust and all that goes past the oxygen sensor. The oxygen sensor's job is to sense how much oxygen is in that exhaust and reports that to the PCM. The PCM then recalculates because they've got another stroke of that piston coming up. So the PCM recalculates and on the next breath of the engine, air is drawn in and the PCM commands the fuel injector to squirt fuel again, either more or less than before. All that goes into the piston chamber for combustion, goes out past the oxygen sensor, and the whole process repeats itself. Of course, this repeating happens very fast. In fact, it happens with every breath a piston takes and the PCM recalculates with each breath. Add in the fact that the engine may have four, six, or eight cylinders, and you drive at different speeds and under various conditions, you can see just how fast this recalculating actually is. Now let me rephrase that. You can see how fast this short-term fuel recalculating actually is. We call that the short-term fuel trim, with the keyword being short. And it looks like this. On the top, you'll see the O2 sensor switching, and the bottom is the short-term fuel trim switching. They switch very much alike, and they just switch continually. Here's another look. Now, if you look at this, the blue line is the short-term recalculating. It recalculates very rapidly, and the graph changes every time the PCM adds or subtracts fuel. And how does the PCM add or subtract fuel? by increasing or decreasing the injector on time. Notice on the left side, you're gonna see the percentage negative numbers, it's decreasing. So in this case, the injector on time is constantly decreasing by varying the percentage amounts. Now the red line is the long-term recalculating. Yes, long-term recalculates also. Look at it again now. The red line may look like it is recalculating slower, but it's not slower, it's just not as often, and in smaller intervals. Now the long-term fuel trim does not change the injector on time directly. It changes the fuel trim strategy. Trim strategy, what's that? Well, strategy is thinking through a problem, trying to make a plan of action all to manage the air-fuel mixture in this case. So a plan of action designed to achieve a goal and that goal is stoichiometric 14.7 to 1, balanced air-fuel mixture. Now this is achieved through fuel mapping. You see, our driving conditions and habits are always changing. When the vehicle is designed, the engineers look at all the input data, the mass airflow sensor, the O2, the TPS, the map, and the vehicle speed. Now they've considered all the possibilities and created the fuel maps. Now fortunately for us, they have done the math ahead of time. And the fuel maps look something like this. And the 14.7 to 1 appears right in the very middle. And again, that's our stoichiometric goal. And it also appears at various other points on the fuel map. Now these being 14.7 to 1 are stoichiometric fuel map strategies. 
Remember, long-term does not directly change the fuel and director pulse width. It changes the strategy to achieve stoichiometric 14.7 to 1. And the instructions to do that are all pre-calculated inside each one of these cell strategies. So the red line, which is long-term fuel trim, changes the cell every time that the short term exceeds the 10% limit, either positively or negatively. Always trying to achieve stoichiometric 14.7 to 1. Now remember I said that short term fuel trim recalculated with every breath of the engine and it can do that all day long. In fact it's supposed to, but it is limited in how much of an adjustment it can make. So short term fuel trim is the PCM trying to balance air fuel mixture. We call a perfect balance stoichiometric 14.7 to 1. Since it is perfectly balanced, no fuel is added or subtracted. And the percentage is zero, right there in the middle, no adjustment. So if we have a lean exhaust, the PCM issues a go rich command and it adds fuel. If we have a rich exhaust, the PCM issues a go lean command and starts subtracting fuel. Remember I said it can do that all day long. In fact, it's supposed to within limits. And those limits are 10%. So you have a negative or a positive 10% limit in this graph. Now here we colored in the 10% limit. Any adjustment more or less than 10% exceeds the limits of the short term fuel trim and the long term fuel trim steps in to help. At this point the whole strategy changes. And this strategy changes as needed to gain control again and balance the air fuel mixture. And the short term fuel trim will then reset at zero and then it will continue to make rapid adjustments until it reaches its 10% limit again. This continues until the combined adjustment of both the short term and the long term are below 10% and at that point the air fuel mixture would be balanced. Let's watch how this works in the same graph when we slow it down. So as the engine runs and develops a lean condition, the computer will add 2% to try and enrich in the fuel. Now it's going to recalculate. Now since we just added fuel, it's going to be rich. So the PCM is going to subtract fuel. Then the PCM is going to recalculate. Since we just subtracted fuel, now we're going to have to add fuel again to achieve balance. Now it recalculates and now it might subtract 7%. Then it recalculates and we may have to add 8%. Then it's going to recalculate and we may have to subtract 9%. Then it recalculates and it may add 10% positive. Then it recalculates and then it may subtract 13%. Now we've gone over the 10% limit. Now the long term fuel trim cell has been sitting there and monitoring all of this all the time but it has been making no strategy adjustments because it had achieved 14.7 to 1 stoichiometric. Now the short term fuel trim at this point is going to reset and start adjusting all over again so we're back at zero. It's going to recalculate and unless the problem is fixed it's going to again try to add fuel. Now in these recalculations I'm just making some assumptions here. These percentages would always change due to how severe a problem we really had. So it's going to recalculate and again perhaps subtract 3%, recalculate, add 4%, recalculate, subtract 7%, recalculate, add 8%, recalculate, minus 9, recalculate, 10%, recalculate, minus 13, again now the second time long term has had to kick in and help. Now it changes the strategy. The long term fuel trim shifts to a different strategy again trying to attempt to achieve 14.7 to 1. It's recalculating and changing the strategy over and over again as long as the engine is running. Now the PCMs do a very good job of managing the air fuel mixture. And all of this recalculating and fuel cell strategy changes goes on and on without us even being aware of it, usually. 
But sometimes the PCM just can't keep it balanced. And that's when the check engine light comes on, making us aware. So, why the long-term field trim should be the first data PID you look at? Well, instead of wondering what to spend your time on or what to check first, if you look at the long-term field trim first, you'll know if the PCM is successfully doing its job or struggling to keep the air-fuel mixture balanced. If it is struggling, it indicates the fuel mixture is either rich or lean, and we'll know which side of the struggle we need to focus on. Why is it rich or why is it lean? So, a short-term adjustment won't turn on the check engine light. Long-term will, however, give us an indication of how severe a problem we have. So be sure to focus on and work to fix what's causing the PCM to struggle with the long-term fuel trim.